In 1833, Tidal Salt had just taken over his father's business of wool. Over the next 30 years, he'd grown this business to have a number of mills all around Bradford. But he's having a problem now, increasingly difficult to manage his mills over the large area. So he wanted to bring all his mills together into one location. And in order to do that, he had to bring in the civil engineers because he wanted to build the largest mill that had ever been built before. He needed a large open area to store his goods and for his looms and his workers. So he chose the location of Saltaire, just north of Shipley. It was next to the newly built Midland Railway. It was next to the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. And just down the road was the River Air to give him fresh, clean water for the processes in the mill. And this is the result of his mill. Salt's Mill, the largest mill ever built. The ground floor had the largest open space ever built. Heavy stone slabs to give a firm foundation. But in order for this heavy building to be built, civil engineers had to innovate, had to take new skills, stuff they already knew, into new, new scenarios. So the roof, you can see above the windows, all these curved arches. And that was new in a building, enabled a clear span without pillars and without blocking the area underneath. Tide Salt had quite a, a, a liking of Italian architecture, so he directed the engineers and architects to design his mill in an Italian style. So looking at all the spires, the towers and the chimneys, a lot of effort went into the detailing of all these extra items. The Leeds and Liverpool Canal was great being so close. It was a broad canal. Civil engineers had ensured this canal was wide, knowing that boats would get bigger. One of the greatest success of this Leeds and Liverpool Canal was that it was able to compete with the railways. Horse can pull one tonne on land. And on water, such as the Liverpool Canal, the same horse could pull five tonnes at a greater speed, which enabled the mill to move a lot more materials quicker and cheaper. The success, therefore, meant the mill could be successful. At its peak, it was making over 18 miles of alpa alpaca yarn every day, and only 3,000 workers with 1,200 looms. Once he'd finished the mill in 1853, on his 50th birthday, he set about the village. Now in 1848, a cholera outbreak had killed 48,000 people. So when he built Saltaire village, every house had clean water, sanitation and gas. Unheard of at the time for his workers, only the rich and wealthy could afford these luxuries. As the mill continued to expand, so did the village. He built churches, schools, public bath, gymnasiums, and his workers were happier and more efficient. Sir Titus Salt died in the 1870s, and his mill continued to win as a trust with the same principles of looking after the workers. As time went on, into the 1960s and 70s, the mill went into terminal decline. Production of wool stopped, and the mill closed. In 1987, a local person bought the mill and wanted to renovate it. For that, he had to get civil engineers involved to look up which parts of the building were safe. There was a proposal to knock it down, civil engineers came in, assessed the building, brought in new designs, innovative ways to keep the existing building looking outside the same, make it, make it stronger, make it last for another 250 years. And with that now, the mill is ever more successful, employing over a thousand people with restaurants and factories and offices. As a civil engineer, it's great to look at things like this, having seen them on the drawing board, knowing that the work that we do, and the work that I do as a civil engineer, is enabled buildings and canals and rivers and everything that we see to continue. And as we no longer have outbreaks of diphtheria, cholera and typhoid, because we take for granted we have clean water and our sewage goes away to be treated cleanly. And that's why I love being a civil engineer.